Shooting distortion grids is an important stage of VFX production. A properly filmed grid allows us to get information about lens distortion, which is crucial for high-quality camera tracking and compositing. In this video, we will provide you a step-by-step -step guide of how to shoot distortion grids. Also, we will show the most common mistakes and provide links to useful materials that you can find in the description down below. So, let's get started. Firstly, you need a grid. You can create it by yourself, buy it from us, rent it, or in some cases, even display it on your monitor screen. There are no ideal grid parameters. It all depends on the camera and the used lens. For ourselves, we have chosen a size of 62 by 120 centimeters with a grid spacing of 15 millimeters. In most cases, this will solve your tasks. We strongly do not recommend you to use grids with reduced grid scale in the center. In some software, such as 3D Equalizer, this complicates automatic grid detection. After you have picked the grid, it's time to prepare it for shooting. To do this, securely fasten the grid vertically using any available method while maintaining the horizon. It's important to make sure that the surface of the grid is perfectly flat and free from waves, wrinkles, bends, or any other deformations. If you are using XYZ grid, simply magnetize it to any flat, vertical metallic surface. Make a flat, soft lighting setup, as highlights and strong lighting variations can complicate the work of the match move artist. After that, we move on to the camera settings. We recommend to shoot grids after the main footages has been filmed. This is necessary to know what formats were used because the format affects which part of the sensor is used and this affects the final field of view. The field of view of our optical system consisting of the camera and lens. If shooting was done in multiple formats, we capture grid on the one that uses the largest sensor area. It is important to note that higher resolution does not always equal a larger sensor size. We recommend checking the information on the manufacturer's website of your camera or using the website VFX Camera Database. If you're not sure about the resolution you need to shoot in, or if distortion grids are being shot before the shooting period begins, then shoot in OpenGate, a format that uses the full sensor size. Matchmove artists will find it more challenging to work with this material, but you will be certain that you have captured all the necessary information. Starting from version 7.1, 3D Equalizer introduced a tool for adapting grids to the required format. For users of earlier versions, we have prepared our own tool. You will find the link in the video description. Next, attach a lens with a minimum focal length. This simplifies next transitions to longer focal length lenses, but let's take it step by step. Place the camera so that its optical axis is perpendicular to the surface of the distortion grid and the camera is aimed at its center. You need to position the camera so that the distortion grid fills the entire frame. Make sure that the edges are completely covered by the checkerboard pattern. Don't try to fit the entire grid within the frame. Let it extend beyond its boundaries if necessary. Double check with the camera operator that the coverage is based on the effective sensor area not the internal frame that can be set in the display settings. Next, close the iris to its maximum value. This is necessary in order to achieve the maximum depth of field, which will be required when changing the focus distance in the next steps. Shooting distortion grids for different focus distances is important because when adjusting the focus ring, the lens breathing effect occurs, which also affects its distortion, especially pronounced in anamorphic lenses. Now you understand that it's important to shoot focus distance and gather this information on the set for each shoot because only together they will work correctly. Most likely a closed iris will significantly darken your image so confidently reduce the FPS to the minimum value. Use the maximum exposure and raise the ISO if necessary. Typically, this is more than enough even in low light conditions. After that, we recommend turning the focusing ring to make sure that the grid is in focus at the all distance values. For the next steps, let's go over again what focal length is and what focus distance is. 
Focal length is the distance from the optical center of the lens to the camera sensor. The focus distance is the distance from the camera sensor to the object that you want to get in focus. Set the minimum focus distance on the lens. Ensure that the grid is in focus. Next, write the following information on a sheet of paper. Camera model, frame format or shooting resolution, focal length, focus distance. Attach a sheet to the grid and press rec. If you are recording at a rate of 1 FPS, then after a couple of seconds, remove the sheet from the frame and, making sure that the grid image is evenly illuminated and without shadows, stop recording. For your convenience, magnetic stickers are included with XYZ grids to record this information, which you do not need to remove from the frame. After that, change the focus distance. We determine the step ourselves based on our needs. The smaller the step, the more accurate the lens distortion profile will be, but the more time it will take. Here is an approximate shooting step for Hawk V-Lite anamorphic 28mm lenses with a minimum focus distance of 0.8 meters and Atlas 32mm lenses with a minimum focus distance of 0.55 meters. As you can see, the change in focus distance is non-linear. This is because the shorter the distance, the more the distortion parameters change. Try to maintain a similar dependency, as in our example. After you have shot all the focus distances, without changing the camera position, proceed to mount the next lens. Please remember that we are shooting from shorter to longer focal lengths. We will get a slightly larger grid spacing in the frame, but in most cases, this is enough. It helps to minimize camera movements. If we are using zoom lenses, the procedure is similar to shooting a distortion grid for fixed focal length lenses, except instead of changing the lens, we rotate the focal length adjustment ring and capture the entire range of focusing distances for each focal length. We determine the step based on the classical values of focal lengths. In some cases, for example, when using macro lenses which have a focusing distance range that does not allow you to move the camera far enough away from the grid, you may get a large enough grid size in the frame. Or when using a telephoto lens when the room does not allow you to move the camera far enough away. For this, you need to use a grid with halved grid spacing. If you are using XYZ grid, simply magnetize an additional mini grid over the main one. The principle here is the same. The new grid should completely overlap the frame. Great. If you have followed our recommendation, you have got great grids, which will be very easy and comfortable to work with. And a few more important things. For the most accurate lens distortion workflow during camera tracking and compositing, we recommend using the Lens Data System, LDS which writes not only the focal length but also focus distance values into the metadata. This allows to apply of dynamic distortion correction within a single shot, even if focus adjustments were made. Zoom lenses without this feature make it almost impossible to accurately set and gather in between values. To summarize the above, it is best to shoot distortion grids at the end of the shooting period. When you know exactly which lenses were used and at what resolutions or frame formats the shooting was done. It is also important to follow the proper naming of your working files. The industry standard looks like this. If you shoot grids on open gate, but the tracking shot came to you in a different resolution, you need to follow next steps. Divide the physical width and height of the sensor used for the shot by the physical width and height of the sensor for the open gate format. Once you have two coefficients, multiply them by the width and height in pixels of your distortion grid and crop it to the resulting pixel values. Next scale the resulting image to the format of your tracking shot and save it. You can read more about this technique in our text guide to shooting distortion grids. The link is in the description of this video. For your convenience, we have prepared a lens distortion database for the most common models. You can download it by clicking the link in the description below. Now you know how to shoot distortion grids, and we hope that this information will make your pipeline more efficient. Have a good solve!